Good morning, chap. I'd like to welcome you back to the third form of your years. I trust you'll thrive in here. Others in the past have come alive in here. Happy to say they found a way. If you recall, I asked when I saw you last that you would consult my list of books for summer reading. We'll be going over those and others you'll be needing in the coming years, if I'm still here. I'm sure you've heard the word that's going about. My superiors doubt I'm fit to teach you. Have a nip before the game and they'll impeach you. Forget about the fact that I reach you. I reach you. Well, enough of that. Let's get on with it. I've arranged to show some slides that might amuse you. And of course, if you're bored, then I'll excuse you. But in times of doubt, in times of sickness, they're my cure. Living well is my best revenge, you can be sure. This is the Grand Canyon in the great state of Arizona. You see there? The magnificent blend of all the colors of the rainbow. It is virtually unphotographical at any given point, it is so vast. The Colorado River trickles through its basin like a deeply buried brook. Geologists say that, with time and erosion, the Pacific Ocean, some 300 miles west, will one day reach the canyon and flow through it. I camp there. See? <laughs> right there. Ah, what peace I found. The only sounds I heard were the sounds I made. This is true. And beyond, by a remote roadside stand, where a Hopi Indian boy planted himself arms folded beneath the sign that said, Seashells here, which indeed there were. This is a hobo, a dying breed. A pity. He claimed that an inheritance fortune awaited him at a bank somewhere back east. But he could care less. Sunset. Another sunset. I know it seems indistinguishable from the last, but <laughs> I remember the difference. Vancouver, British Columbia. I spent some time here at a ski lodge. Something very healthy and wholesome about skiers. Like this one. She always seemed to take a spin on the slopes every time I was there, where I had no business being. But every time I would look up, there she'd be. And soon it would happen that, as soon as she would turn and look up, there I'd be. The chalet. Right there and beside a warm fire is where my mind is wont to wander now. To the scent of pine and the taste of wine. I'm too young for wine now, but make a note of it. <laughs> ah, there's my friend again. She looks rather sad there. It always seemed, well, she always seemed to have some sort of special plan for us. And there, right there, is a beautiful Indian girl. Look at her. Her and her secret, mysterious ways. The pride of her people. The power of sunshine, they said of her. Oregon. This is how logs are transported. Long rafts that trail the northwest rivers. Carnell, California. Those trees seem frozen against the landscape. It reminds me of a book that I read once called The Cypresses Believe in God. <laughs> This was near the end of my adventure. The clock in my head told me that it was time for me to leave, so that I was more concerned with seeing what I could firsthand rather than rushing for the camera. I find that traveling alone is somewhat more realistic than traveling with others. 
You find yourself in a new place, all alone, and you deal with it. As opposed to when you're with others who are familiar to you and, in a sense, shelter you from situations that you would otherwise face head-on. Do you know what I mean? Besides, if your loved ones are with you, you have no one to go home to. <laughs> so on Monday, Lord, I'll go before the board and see what adjective they give this life I live. It makes me laugh that others should write my epitaph. But in times of doubt, I have my slides I will endure. Living well is my best revenge, you can be sure. Yes, in times of doubt, in times of sickness, they're my cure. Living well is my best revenge, you can be sure.